And Roosevelt Brown, who I consider one of the two greatest left tackles in the history of the National Football League, along with Jim Parker, told me that as they were preparing for the 58 and 59 championship games, now this is Rosie Brown, who nobody was better than Rosie. He said, I was looking at him on film. I, I don't want any parts of him. He said, I, I had the other side, which I was really thankful for. One of the great stories at Gino is that he was uh, playing a game on a Sunday afternoon in Baltimore and, and had severe pains in his right side. And they figured it out very quickly that he was having an, appendic an appendicitis attack. And, and uh, they were going to pull him out of the game, which, you know, th he wouldn't come out. Uh, they took him to the hospital after the game. He had his appendix taken out and played the next week. But there's another great story about Gino. And I, I, I know I think Gino over the years probably doesn't want to talk about this as much. But in the 64 championship game, the Colts were a big favorite that year. They had basically locked up the division early. And they, it was nothing, nothing at the half. The Browns exploded in the second half. The game was in Cleveland and beat them 27 to nothing. Uh, late in the game, in the waning, at least the waning minute, probably the, less than a minute, uh, the, the Browns, the, the fans started to converge in the field because this was a huge upset. And the referee said to Gino, Captain Marchetti, can, can we just get, get out of here? He says, absolutely. And Frank Ryan, evidently, the quarterback of the Browns, said, well, wait a minute, we can score again. We still have another timeout. Well, that was Geno's last game. Now, he came back in 66, but he had retired for following that season. He had one football game left to go, the Pro Bowl. They, had, they, they took Frank Ryan to the hospital before that game was over with shoulder surgery. And as some of the old Browns told me, the good doctor was a side armor <laughs> after that. Now, Geno... <laughs> You know, Gino was furious at that and, and only had one game left and he got one more hit in. It's interesting because in 1972, Joe Thomas became the general manager of the Baltimore Colts. He had been with the Vikings and the uh, Miami Dolphins, great personnel evaluator. He was the line coach, both lines in those days, because he only had four or five assistants. He was the line coach of the Baltimore Colts in 1954. Now. You know, the only history I have on this is what Joe told me. And Joe said, if you go back and, and you looked at the rosters, Gino was 19, 1954, it was number 75. That, that was a number you gave to an offensive lineman. That was not a number you gave to a defensive lineman. And uh, they were disappointed in him as a player. He had been floundering a little bit as an offensive tackle. And Joe said to, to Weeb, Eubank, the head coach, let me have him on defense. And he said once he stepped to the other side of the line, it was a different world for Gino. And they gave him 89. It was interesting right after that. But I guess any time you play both ways, and listen, they all played both ways in college and, and particularly in, in uh, those days. And, and sometimes, like Jim Mutchler, who was a tight end of the Colts, preceded John Mackey, played, he played defensive end too, and he was a little guy. But so they, they all played both ways, but there was, there was always a preference. You always like one position better than the other. Usually, the, you know, the bigger guys like defense. So I'm sure that that was perfect for Geno, but I, and I'm, I'm certain that that tenure as an offensive tackle helped him. Um, but Joe tells the story of, of how the, the minute they put him over there, it was like it was natural for him. Well, in 1970, he had, he had retired for the second time in 66, but there were several coaches. Well, well there were coaches on our staff who had coached him, and there were coaches on our staff who had played with him. Uh, Don McCafferty was the head coach, and John Sandusky, had, John Sandusky had coached him in 64, and when he came back in 66, and um, McCafferty was there, and of course, Bobby Boyd played with him, played right behind him, and Dick Bielski, who was on our staff, they were both on our staff, that Dick Bielski had coached him, had played with him, so they knew him, and the one guy they wanted and, then, and when they talked, to, we had still had remnants of that team with United and Maddie and some players like that. And the one guy they wanted on the sidelines the day of the Super Bowl was Gino. And I can still remember Gino. And Gino was, a, is, to this day, is a very humble man. He, uh, he never said much. But just this towering presence. And there, when you see the NFL films, uh, highlight film on, the, on Super Bowl V, you see him all the time on the sidelines. He's standing right beside the head coach. He wasn't standing by, back by, you know, and the players welcomed him. But just his presence, having him there, was, uh, was like a first priority for that staff.